我们把呃领唱的、伴唱的、私情的。按电脑的、打鼓的、弹吉他的也也是，所以我们都交到神你手中。主啊，你大大的来祝福他们的神，你大你的灵大大的运行在他们当中的神，来带领我们会众来赞美你，来歌颂神你的伟大。主，主啊，我们要把我们的木子和翻译神来交到神你手中的主。你的灵，你的话语充满他们的心，你的智慧充满在他们的神，好让他们口里所说的神呐、啊，我们都能够得着，我们都能够，嗯，明白，能够知道神呐、啊，你在偷着他们替我，呃、嗯，向我们说话主，让我们今天早上来神呐、啊，是能够富富足足、满满足足的回家，是你所说的神呐、啊，我们能够记在心里啊主，主啊。这个早晨，神啊，我们也再一次将我们的妈妈们，还有就来成为妈妈们的姐妹，交到神你手中的神，你大大的来祝福他们的神，你大大的因着他们的牺牲，因着他们的群劳，神啊，你来祝福他们，你来喜悦他们的神，你给他们有喜乐的心，你给他们有健康的体魄，神啊。能够在你的灵里跳跃，快乐来赞美你的主，我们将祷告奉主圣的名字祈求，阿门。天父，我们感谢赞美你，我们祈求耶稣基督，你用宝血来遮盖洁净，赦免我们所有的罪，所有的不义。我们祈求今天早上圣灵你来在我们当中掌权掌管。释放你自己的圣灵的能力在我们当中，让我们带着你的同在，带着你的力量来服侍你，来敬拜你。主啊，今早上带领我们进入你的自身，所以你同在。主啊，我们谢谢你，谢谢你的十字架上你的爱。主啊，感恩主，哈利路亚，谢谢你主，哈利路亚。哦，你要呃，高牧人民在每一个呃，是呃，我们的我们的诗歌的团队当中，主啊，你将圣灵刚刚浇灌下来。主啊，也祝福每一个弟兄姐妹，今天早上我们能够，呃，打开我们的心，打开我们的灵来敬拜你，也能够领受好好的领受你神你的话语。祝福今天早上你的仆人的话语能够来召集我们。祝福每一个弟兄姐妹主，还没有来到当中的你都呃，借着你的圣灵来带领，使他们平安的到达。主啊，我们感恩，主啊，我们同心的祷告交托，奉耶稣基督得胜的名。阿门，阿门，阿门。还没有呃开始之前，我向每一个母亲讲，母亲节，母恩，母父。
我们。当我们需要你的时候，主啊，让我们能够寻见你。主啊，我们感谢你，耶稣，感谢你，再次的有你的宝血恩膏盖洁净我们。主啊，洁净我们里面的，主啊，帮助我们好好的来来服侍你，好好的来跟随你，让你的爱来引导我们。主啊，我们谢谢你，感恩主。
才能够得胜。我们一定要回到神的同在里面，借着他的宝血十字架上所领的我们罪的赦免，借着他的鞭伤，我们的软弱跟疾病都能够蒙恩的医治。主耶稣就是这么的牺牲，他的话语是不改变的。我们一定能够在耶稣基督里面得胜。
，让耶稣的爱在我们的当中，让我们有耶稣所教导的因力，彼此相爱的心，不会减少，不会加增。
们就成为神最无辜的人民。
忧愁，眼睛干瘪，又因我一切的敌人眼睛昏花。你们一切作孽的人，离开我吧，因为耶和华听了我哀哭的声音，耶和华听了我的恳求，耶和华必收纳我的祷告，我的一切仇敌都必羞愧，大大惊慌。你们必要退后，忽然羞愧。感谢神的话语。Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness to us。Thank you that you continually watch over us。We commit our offering to you, Lord。May you be pleased with what we give to you。In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Wednesday we have our prayer meeting at eight thirty. Do join us. A very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. And welcome to everyone else. Uh, we have some uh, roses for mothers afterwards. Huh? And our sister Xu Hua also has uh, prepared uh, a, a beautiful uh, jelly cake uh, that uh, we will uh, partake of afterwards. <coughs> Let's turn to Revelation chapter three. First book of the Bible, third chapter, and verse sixteen. Chapter three, verse sixteen. These are the words that uh, God spoke uh, to. To the woman in the garden after they had sinned. To the woman, he said, "I will greatly increase your pain in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you." 上世纪三章十六节又对女人说：“我必多多加增你怀胎的苦楚，你生产儿女必多受苦楚，你必厌恶你丈夫，你丈夫必管辖你。” Right, there will be pain in childbearing. 会有生孩子的痛。At this point, when these words were spoken by God. No child had been born to the woman. And in fact, in Revelation uh, twenty-one, there it says that there will be no more crying, no more tears, no more sorrow in heaven. 启示录二十一章那里就有说到，在天堂不再会有哭泣、忧愁、忧愁。And so that means there will be no more childbearing in heaven. 也就是说，在天堂不会再有怀胎。No more mourning, so no more death in heaven. 不再有有。Right, so heaven will be a perfect place. So heaven will be a perfect place. If there was childbearing and pain, it would not be heaven. If there was childbearing and pain, it would not be heaven. So childbearing and pain belong to this world. So childbearing and pain belong to this world. Right, belongs to sin. But you know, this is what God had planned that there would be childbearing. Otherwise, how would we come into the world? 
I don't know how else, huh? I mean, God, God made the angels, huh? In heaven. Right, and uh, Jesus said there will be no marrying, no giving to Mary in heaven. So there will be no childbearing, no pain. So all who have ever been born uh, will be born in this world, not in, no longer uh, in heaven. <coughs> so if you look at it, uh, God created the heaven and earth. Right, and he commanded man to be fruitful to fill the fill his creation. And then you know sin came in and and so on. So it is uh, through God uses this uh, to fill the earth to multiply. Right? And all who have ever been born uh, have been born, will have been born by the time God closes shop on this world. <coughs> when God destroys heaven and earth, the present heaven and earth, uh, that means there will be no new persons being born yeah, in, in heaven. <coughs> I was listening to a story uh, on, on the YouTube. I don't know whether it's real or not. Uh. Uh, YouTube, you uh, 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 there was this accident uh, where a father and a child both died. And the boy was later revived, but the father, you know, wasn't revived. So he told his mother, uh, that uh, uh, he, when he, after that, you know, he, he saw his father, he saw various relatives there. And then his, this little boy said, you know, about nine years old, he said, Oh, I also saw two of your children. And this mother was surprised because you know after he revived he, this little boy told her this story. Because she had never told him about the two children that the two babies that miscarried. Uh, because he was just a, a, a little boy. Uh, but the fact that uh, they were alive uh, after that uh, was, was amazing. Uh, so every life that God creates uh, uh, is in, how do you say, while we are on this earth. Uh, there will be no new children in heaven. So I don't know how true, I don't know how true. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, well, it was a good story, lah. <laughs> How the story. Okay. Uh, that uh, in heaven, uh, we we will all be there. Amen. 
Uh, okay. Even even with those who have that uh, who belong to us that we have not seen before. So uh, God is good. Amen. Now, um, so there will be pain uh, in childbearing. In heaven, no childbearing, so no pain. No suffering, no sorrow. This is important. Because pain belongs to sin and to this world. In heaven, there's no pain, no suffering. Uh, it's something totally new that we have never experienced before. Uh, but it is something to look forward to. One of the things that uh, the Bible teaches uh, is that of inner beauty. Because outward beauty wears out. Uh, in this world, nothing remains. Uh, we, you know, when when we are young, you know, we have black hair, but when we are older, <laughs> and uh, our strength also goes. You know, last time I used to run upstairs, and now. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> uh, I try that, but different. <laughs> uh, so you know, we wear out in our bodies. Uh, but the Bible tells us that inner beauty remains. So turn turn to 1 Peter 3, which is right towards the end of the Bible. 1 Peter chapter 3. And here this passage talks about wives and husbands. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. But this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. 因为古时仰赖神的圣洁夫人正是以此为装饰顺服自己的丈夫就沙拉听从雅伯拉汉称他为主你们若行善不因恐吓而惧而害怕先是沙拉的女儿了 Verse 3 Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair, wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes 第三节你们不要以外面的编头发带金饰穿美衣为装饰 Because if you have braided hair 
at some point you will have to unbraid your hair, you know, to wash it or to, to be comfortable. If you wear gold jewelry, you you cannot wear 24 hours. When you go to sleep, you take it off. Fine clothes, same. Huh? At some point, you'll have to take off your fine clothes. And so, does that mean you are not beautiful? <laughs> Once you take and braid your hair, huh? take off your gold jewelry and uh, your fine clothes? Huh? If your beauty only depends on what you put on, that means when you take off, <laughs> are you not beautiful anymore? Thank God, huh? we don't have uh, uh, women in this church who wear a lot of makeup uh, and wear a lot of fine clothes, put on gold jewelry and spray a lot of perfume when they come to church. Uh, uh, some churches they have, you know, such women. Uh, they will come in their best car and, and everything else. Huh? Because they want to see what? Want to show off to everyone. <coughs> uh, but thank God, huh? uh, all the ladies here huh? I go for inner beauty. Uh, which is of great worth in God's sight. Because it is unfading. Uh, it doesn't depend on what you put on or you take off. It depends on your character, your personality that is with you all the time. Here it, it mentions about Sarah and her submission to Abraham. And it says that do not give way to fear. You know, it, in those days, uh, men could take more than one wife, and often they did. And so then maybe the fear that, oh, if I'm not beautiful anymore, you know, he'll take another wife and I won't be uh, the only one. Uh, or he'll put me away, divorce me because I'm no longer uh, beautiful. Uh, with kings, uh, they, they could do that. Uh, because they have the power and authority. Uh, so, if, if, a, if a woman doesn't give them male children, uh, heirs to succeed them, uh, often they will put them aside, you know, divorce them and marry another one to try and get uh, a male heir. <coughs> and we know that in history, uh, some, some kings did that. Uh, especially uh, King Henry VIII, I think, of England. Uh, he he uh, tried to get an heir, but in the end it was still... Uh, uh, he only had daughters. And so his uh, daughter, uh, Elizabeth, uh, became the queen. So, in, before God, uh, it is not outward beauty, but inner beauty. Uh, God looks at the heart, He doesn't look at the outward. And so you cannot try and 
put on, you know, cosmetic, uh, look beautiful, uh, and try and deceive God. So you can't your Maybe <laughs> in this world, uh, you, you, you can uh, try and, and, and look special and so on, and impress some people. You know, while your boyfriend, girlfriend, you can do a lot of things, you know, uh, and, and pretend to be special. Uh, but once you get married, you know, you, you, you cannot pretend anymore. Uh, you, uh, there are all kinds of stories uh, about people who try to pretend, but you know, the truth comes out you know, once you're married. And so God wants us to be honest, to be real. Uh, so, the inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Uh, gentle and quiet because this allows God to work in their life. Uh, because if you are loud, uh, if you are not quiet, then you are loud. Uh, you cannot hear God. If you are speaking all the time, you can never, you cannot hear. But if you are quiet, then you can hear from God. But you can also hear uh, from your husband. And one of the most important jobs uh, or, or function uh, of a mother is to hear her children. Uh, because as they grow up, they will have problems and difficulties. Uh, so you need to guide them, you need to help them. Uh, so you need to hear, you need to have a quiet spirit. Uh, and you need to be gentle because if you are not gentle, uh, the, the children may not uh, uh, come, come near to you. Uh, if you are always disciplining them, uh, using the cane on them, uh, your children might be fearful of you uh, and not come to you. But if you are gentle and quiet, uh, your children will come to you and you can help them. And of course the home will be a better place. Uh, not, not full of noise and, and shouting and screaming and uh, uh, all kinds of negative things. Uh, but a quiet uh, and the uh, gentle spirit uh, makes for a beautiful home. Uh, because God can be present, God uh, can reign and rule in that home. So this is uh, the encouragement uh, to all the mothers uh, that you have a gentle and quiet spirit. Uh, because this is of great worth, of great value in God's sight. And of course, uh, I'm sure in your husband, in the man, in the father's sight also. Uh, then, then there will be peace at home. One of the things about uh, uh, childbearing is that uh, it's not a simple experience. 
you know, because you carry the baby for nine months. Some women have an easy pregnancy. Some have a very difficult pregnancy. Uh, and they suffer uh, through the pregnancy. Uh, and then when it comes to giving birth, of course, uh, as God said, uh, you, the pain will be greatly increased. Uh, yet, there is great joy when the baby is born. Uh, when, when the first cry of the baby is heard, uh, all the memory of the pain is gone. Uh, this new life, uh, that is so small and, and helpless, uh, then the sacrifice uh, to, to take care and to nurture and to feed uh, that, that new life begins. Uh, because any time of the day or night, the baby cries, <laughs> you have to take care of it. Uh, so it's a it's a great sacrifice. Uh, and uh, nowadays, uh, fathers also try and, and, and help out as much as possible. Uh, it's not like in the olden days, uh, where where the men uh, didn't didn't take part or took part very little. Uh, but nowadays, uh, most most people try and help out as much as possible. Uh, so it's it's a little bit easier to bring up children. Uh, there are a lot more uh, equipment and things to help out. But everything outward uh, is uh, temporary. Uh, times, time moves on and the children's needs change. Uh, but the inner beauty should remain uh, and should even increase. I mean, outward beauty you can only do so much. Uh, no matter how you braid your hair, you know, or, or put put accessories and so on, there's a limit to how much you can do it. Uh, and then fine clothes, I mean, you know, even if you have, uh, if you change your, keep changing your clothes uh, in a, in a, in a, many times in a day, that's also, a, you might get tired after a while. Uh, but inner self can be increased. Uh, you can be gentler. Uh, you can be more quiet, more patient. Uh, and to love even more and to uh, uh, sacrifice even more. So there's no limit uh, to the inner beauty that a, a, a woman can have. But the outward beauty is limited. Uh, not by time, by effort and everything else. So that's why inner beauty is so much better. Uh, doesn't cost a cent. Uh, so rich or poor also can be very beautiful inside. 
Uh, and God uh, values that more than the outward. Uh, because the outward fades, the outward wears out. But the inner uh, remains uh, all forever, I would say. Uh, even when you go to heaven, that same inner beauty will be there. So if you develop your inner beauty, it is not only unfading, it is forever, eternal. Uh, whatever external beauty you have is always limited. Uh, hair color, I mean, <laughs> you can keep dyeing your hair, but, you know, Ah, yeah. ah, you have to keep doing it. And I was, I was looking at my neck, ah, my, the skin here getting a bit looser. Mm -hmm. ah, and, ah, age, ah. Ah, yeah. But, so, ah, Develop the inner beauty. Uh, if you exercise and, and you know uh, and go for a lot of facial treatment and everything, uh, you have to keep doing it. Right then, you know, for some people they even go and see plastic surgeon. <laughs> I have to try and keep that external beauty, external looks. Uh, but we know uh, sometimes the attempt goes bad and instead of being more beautiful, <laughs> they become worse. So inner beauty never wears out. And it's forever. Uh, so, develop that inner beauty. Uh, allow the fruit of the Spirit to come out, express itself in you. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Uh, you can come and see, uh, read that afterwards. Uh. <laughs> anyway, from Galatians 5, uh, 21 and 22. Okay, so be beautiful inside. Uh, we're going to give you a rose afterwards and it will probably last a week. Uh, but after that, you dry up and its beauty will fade. Uh, I don't know how strong the, the smell is, uh, the scent, the fragrance. Uh, I, I didn't choose the rose because it uh, had a good smell. I, I, I chose it because of the size and the color. Uh, so uh, I hope it, it meets your approval. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you for every mother in, in our midst here. <coughs> Thank you, Lord, for the children that they have born. And we pray, Lord, that they would indeed have this precious before your sight, uh, inner beauty. That they would have a gentle and quiet spirit before you. And 
A spirit that hears your voice that listens to you. Uh, a pure and reverent spirit that uh, that wins over even unsaved family members. We thank you, God, that our lives can speak uh, even without words. So we pray, God, that you will bless every mother here uh, to, to increase in their inner beauty. Give them greater patience, give them greater uh, perseverance. And we pray for your grace and your mercy to be even more in their lives. So that they can bless their families even more. So we thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon every mother. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we will distribute the roses now, but then, then we will close the service. And so, uh, can uh, Kaiser and uh, Chen Jing bang bang so pai pai ni kui ba? Let's all rise as we close the service. Father, we thank you for your presence with us today. And we pray your blessing upon us as we go. Bless each and every one with health and strength. We commit those who have physical needs into your hands. Bless them with health and strength. Take every weakness, sickness, and disease from them in the name of Jesus. We release the health and strength of heaven into their bodies. We thank you, God, that you love each and every one of us. We pray for our country, Malaysia. That you bless our country, Lord. May our country be, bring glory to your name. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Go with us, Lord. And bless us in this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the uh, the uh, the cake afterwards, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord bless you.